Warning, the following audio transmission is based on theory and is intended for entertainment purposes only. It's Doomsday and its affiliates will not be held liable for anything your dumbass does. Listener discretion is advised. Welcome everybody to It's Doomsday Podcast. Today is January 23rd, time is 2023. Shit, I screwed that all up. What's up, Jake? How are you doing today? <laughs> Wait, what did you screw up? Uh, I said time is 2023. Technically, the time is 1800. I don't know how I botched that one. It's not 2023, that's the year. I, that is the year, that is correct. Um, Jake, can you hear me okay? How's my audio? What? Huh? <laughs> you sound beautiful oh okay yeah everything's sitting at about 50 percent, except for gains kind of at about 25 sounds fine sounds, sounds fine. really good good to go so uh for everybody out there guys i'm actually podcasting from the house today this is something i i typically don't do so i'm sitting in my bedroom on my bed utilizing a mic and a computer i've never used before for the show uh this is also going to be the setup i use while i'm overseas so it's it's good i get a test run with it but i gotta tell you dude it's really really odd podcasting in the bedroom i typically don't do that in here i typically do something else what sleep. do you do in there i sleep in here <laughs> oh <laughs> anyway so uh welcome everybody in uh that's coming in here we've got jake obviously we've got raccoon six we've got al wv pappy rifle i saw have food was in here uh, which is ozarks and it's not letting me jump screens here so i think that's about all the people that are in here right now welcome in everybody i hope you had a great monday so far mine was a bit torturous um but we'll get into that a little bit how was your day jake it was good man smooth sailing um i'm always tired nothing new there uh highly caffeinated regular day highly caffeinated regular day you know i've been sucking down your coffee all day that's it (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> so How is it it's good i uh i'm out of the bally blue which is my my favorite one now i'm on to uh i just ran through the hazelnut and the mocha i am now on the six bean blend which is good um i like it a lot i have a ton of the the pumpkin spice but i don't think i'll end up getting to it i think it's i don't think i'm gonna end up getting to it because i got more coming in the mail which is supposed to be here today and could be in my mailbox right now Ooh, you better go check I will know when the wife gets home because she will probably stop by and check the mail. The reason why I am broadcasting from the house today is uh, because my wife's out getting her. Um, I, I'm just going to call them Porto pictures. I don't know what they're called. Uh, boudoir. Boudoir. Uh, boudoir. Yeah, boudoir. So uh, my wife got a gift certificate for boudoir photos from her coworkers, which I guess sounds a little odd <laughs> now that I'm like thinking about it. She got these last year on her birthday, and finally they got her scheduled to go in and do these things, which I feel bad for a little bit because she's like a little bit under the weather today. So I know she's going to tell me after the fact of getting these photos that they would have been better if she felt better. And I, I, you know, I'm inclined to agree. I just saw Eric come in, Shelby, Jack. I see Mags in just a minute, too. Welcome in, everybody. Um, Guys, it's really hard for me to scroll on this computer. So if I don't, if I miss somebody or I miss a comment or something, that's my bad i'm sorry he's just Uh, ignoring you yeah i'm just that's what i'm doing that's my goal today just ignore everybody so my day today i got it so i I, we woke up and mondays you know are always like kind of a hard day in general getting back in the swing of things being stuck here with the kids all weekend and, and getting back into like the oldest ones going to school the youngest ones going to daycare homeschooling the middle one and my wife's also off on Monday, so also trying to, like, factor errands and all that stuff. We wake up this morning, and there's a huge pile of puke 
on mm. the on the couch in the living room, right? Mm. And I, I immediately, my go-to was to blame the dog. Well, it wasn't the dog. It was Dingus. Dingus just hurled all over the couch in the middle of the night. When I was going to bed last night, he was on the couch. I was like, oh, I'm just going to leave him there. He looks all peaceful. He's fine. And then there's all this puke out there this morning. So it's like he clearly doesn't feel good. So he went and did some running around with us today. I dropped off my truck to get alignment done. Tires are still rubbing. Figured that out another day. Uh, we get back to the house here. And he looks at me and says, Daddy, I don't feel good. And I'm like, do you think you're going to throw up? He's like, yeah. I was like, run to the bathroom now. In the process, he projectile vomits from the kitchen into the bathroom, mm. covering a bunch of shoes along the way. Uh, and I had that mess to clean up. And I could handle a lot of things, but vomit really isn't one of them. Um, so I end up vomiting in the process of all this stuff. So it's been a... We're off to a great start today, man. <laughs> nice. A twofer. <laughs> yeah, you know, it's it's really funny. I could do baby puke. Like, if a baby spits up milk or something, I'm fine with that. I have no problem with that. There's been times my kids were sick, and they just wanted to be held, and, and Dingus would lay on my lap continuously throwing up, and I'd just have my wife come change the towel out, and I'm fine. Like, when they're little, I can do it. But when they get older and there's chunks and it has a pungent smell, it's like, mm-mm, I got to touch it now, mm-mm, mm-mm. And I could do I could do hmm. drunk puke. Like if a drunk person pukes, doesn't bother me at all. Don't know why it just doesn't. But it's it's that I'm physically sick puke that I can't do with people. I don't know why. Anyway, hence does why it, I'm going to make such a great EMT. <laughs> does your kid do that thing where you get them into the bathroom and they just stare at you with that empty stare before they're getting ready to to, to blow chunks? And you're trying to tell them, like, into the toilet, man. Go into the toilet. And they just stare at you. And then all of a sudden, it just comes out and it goes all the way down their belly. Um, No, we never make it to the bathroom. Oh, that's way worse. Yeah. Um, it's, it's always a thing where Dingus just freezes and either pees his pants or pukes on himself before we can have him react correctly. But he's little, he, you know, we'll, we'll get there, I'm sure. Uh, welcome in, Jelly. Welcome in, Dina Joy. I hope you guys are doing well today. So, uh, any crazy stuff with you on this lovely Monday or or what? I'm just, <laughs> I'm just out here living in the Matrix, fully awakened by the red pill. We're looking around the world, watching all these people with their their Starbucks in hand, doing their thing in their daily schedule. And I'm just out here saying, isn't there something more? Because there is, you know, there is something, you, more. you know, I, I think I'm, I'm, I'm connecting with every single person here right now. We're having a moment. Just look around and just watch all the people and just observe. If you really want to see the matrix in action, just go to Walmart and just watch. So as I'm, going through my daily life and, and observing people, I absolutely 100% see that people are like in a trance. They have blinders on and they're not really aware of what's going on around them at all. I see it with people's driving habits, the way they push a shopping cart through a store, the interactions I have with people and sarcasm is just gone. So I don't know what happened to that. I can barely make any jokes anymore. Comedy is offensive anymore. Have you ever seen those videos of people that go to comedy clubs and then get offended by the jokes? I've never been to a comedy club and been offended by a joke. However, I've only been to a comedy club maybe twice, once or twice. But have you seen the videos like, you know, YouTube shorts and, and, and the IG reels of like comedians and like they always have hecklers like what I, I don't understand the thought process of. You know what? You know what, sweetie? Let's go to a comedy show because I'm feeling angry today and I need to be mad. Okay, sounds like a great idea. Let's go yell at a comedian. <laughs> that does, yeah, I, I get what you're saying. I'll, so I'll tell you what, and, and I'm going to kind of play devil's advocate a little bit here because when I lived in Florida, we went out with a couple of friends of ours because they had like free tickets to the comedy club, right? And we were like, okay, cool, we'll go. After we went, it was like, hey, give us your email and blah, blah, blah. We'll let you know if there's any promos and stuff. Because it's like dinner and a show. They give you snacks and feed you and they bring you beers or whatever. 
And so we did that. Then we started getting those like free tickets all the time. Mm -hmm. Or like you can get into the comedy show tonight for a dollar. So I'm just going to play devil's advocate a little bit here and say that if a lot of comedy clubs are doing this, some people might show up not really knowing what it is. They're just going because like they're, hey, this is free. You, you know, go to a comedy club not knowing what it is. I, I mean, do we live in America? Hey, preppers, do you want 10% off survival food? Go to www.readywise.com and use code DOOM10 at checkout for 10% off all your survival food needs. Again, that's code DOOM10 at checkout at readywise.com, D-O-O-M-10 for 10% off at readywise.com. Yeah, I'm just saying. Um, welcome in, Rudolph uh, Hartz. Angela and Ralph, what's up, Ralph? Welcome in. Yeah, that's I mean, it. so I'm, sh- I'm it's sh- like, it's the same as getting mad as going to a burger joint and asking for a pizza, and they're like, "We don't have pizza here, just burgers." What? Ah, oh, let me speak to your manager. Like, comedy club jokes, funny, right? <sighs> yeah, I I know, but I'm I'm just thinking there's got to be people out there that are going because it's free. Or very, very cheap. And it's just like, hey, this is something to do. And they go there not really knowing what they're getting themselves into. Because, like, let's be honest here. Your in-person comedy shows, they're raunchy. They're dirty. They're offensive. That's what they are. That's why it's I funny. Mean, yeah, that is why it's funny. I mean, I, I remember the one joke that this comedian told. It was like a joke he did that lasted the whole show. And then the punchline was at the end. And the joke basically went like this. The comedian was talking about how, you know, when he goes to the mall or he goes out the stores with his friends, he's always grabbing like job applications, just one from this store, maybe one from that store, just some random applications. And this kind of went on was this running thing throughout his routine and nobody batted an eye to it. We're just like, okay, whatever dude likes to get job applications. Who gives a shit? And then at the end of the, at the end of his show, the punchline was, and then we were walking out of Starbucks and there happened to be this homeless guy. And he asked me for some change. Instead, I handed him 12 job applications. And that was the punchline. And it's pretty offensive to some people, but it was hilarious. But that's what you go to these shows for. You go there to have that like pushed a little bit. But my, maybe not everybody knows that. I I embrace being offended. I, it's hilarious. <laughs> okay. <laughs> sure. Um. Anyway, to move into, to move in, to keep the show moving here. <laughs> Because I didn't, I didn't know we got. We, wow, we really went off on a tangent there about the comedy clubs. I, how did we even get there? Oh yeah, people in your life are offended. Tell me more. That's that seems to be life these days, dude. Um, go walk down the street, you'll find somebody mad about something. The sun's too sunnish. Ah, <laughs> the jokes are too jokey. Well, let's let's talk about. I mean, I just think we should kind of stay on this theme for a while of being offended. I inadvertently offend people all the time, right? I have a bad habit of making inappropriate jokes at inappropriate times, and it pisses a lot of people off. What? Yeah, and it's not it's not necessarily an intentional thing. It's just like I take advantage of those opportunities. Like, oh, it would be funny if I said this, and a lot of people don't like that. I've gotten into some shit for it, and I, I mean, what? I'm typically apologetic, like, hey, my bad, even though I really don't feel like I should be. What? Yeah. You wouldn't you wouldn't believe, Jake, all oh, the stories I could tell you, man. <laughs> tell me a story. This is this has been since I was at a, do I laugh at a funeral? I have, um, Ralph. I absolutely have. Uh, <laughs> this is something that started whenever I was a kid that I got in trouble for ma- for laughing at inappropriate times or making comments that were inappropriate. Um, sometimes we're bigger than others. And one story I don't really want to go down the road of, it almost got me kicked out of church camp as a kid. Um, Cause I made one comment. I was like, huh, this kind of reminds me of this. And they were like, Oh no, we're calling your parents, boy, you're done. And I'm like, okay, <laughs> like, all right, I'm sorry, my bad. Yeah, let them get over it. I agree, I agree, Shelby. So, but the the world today, I mean, Jake, you're right. There is this um, 
everybody is offended over every little thing, which which blows my mind because I do feel like there are two sides to this. People will tolerate being offended if it's for something they want, right? Yeah. That's what's so odd about this. Um, you know, and, and I don't really know how to put this into perspective in, in, in different ways, but like one good example I could think of is, you know, whenever I worked in Tampa, we had a lot of protesting going on down there all the time between, um, the religious people and the gays and the satanic people. And then there was like the anonymous guys. There was always somebody on the corner yelling at each other. Right. Huh? Always a thing. And a lot of, a lot of the time, you know, the, the people that like the, the gay people that were sick of being gay bashed and picked on and everything else were coming at the religious people with some of the worst, horrible things I've ever heard. Right. Huh. That's not, that's not one sided though, because you also had the religious people coming back at them with things that were just as horrible. Right. But it's, I mean, but, you know, you're having both groups of people here, one saying, hey, you're being intolerant, and now we're going to be intolerant to you, and then the other ones, you know, yelling back saying, we'll burn. But they're each subjecting themselves to be in these positions where they're offended, right? Huh. So, and, and it, <laughs> it also goes... You know, and and I hate and you know, and I'm, somebody's going to say fat shaming. I know this is coming, but I'm I'm going to go ahead and, and I'm going to say this anyway. So, we have made special accommodations for people that are that are larger throughout this country. Okay, and I mean, I, I get it. You know, people have medical conditions. There's this, there, there's that. Like, it, it is a thing. You know, that some of these circumstances are out of people's control. But I've seen where people get offended because they can't do things or they can't participate in things because of their weight. And 90% of the time, that's that person's fault, right? And and they're offended because they can't participate or they're getting stares or they're getting looked at or, hey, there's a weight limit on this. You can't do it. And I, and I you know, I understand being in that person's, you know, you could be in that person choosing the feelings that they have. And I do feel bad, but, at the, but at the same time, you, you have to cross a line between, you know, am I subjecting myself on purpose to be offended? Or is it a situation where people are just being dicks just to be dicks and they're being offensive? Huh? <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, I want to say so many things. You know? Well, this is the platform to do it. Okay, fine. Um, okay. <laughs> I'm convinced. Well, anyway, I I am of the contention that all of this probably started around the time when we decided to give people participation trophies. And I would love to hear somebody argue that with me and, and why that would be incorrect. Um, so, Jake, I have no idea what a participation trophy is, so I need you to explain that before for me before I can argue with you. Whew, I almost dropped my phone. Oh. <laughs> okay, we're good. Um, so, the participation trophies um, were trophies that people would get when they're, like, in Little League or whatever as a young kid in a sporting event and... Uh, whether you did good or bad, you still get an award just because you showed up. Not because you necessarily did well, but because you were there. Right. That's the best award ever. That's the worst award ever. Come on. You didn't have to do anything for it. It's great. That's the problem. You didn't have to do anything for it. What are you encouraging? I showed up. I should get something. That's what you're encouraging. That sounds like entitlement. No. Yeah. <laughs> it sounds like entitlement to me. And, and that was, what, 2008 or so? Um, add 10 years to that, and uh, you're in your mid-20s now as a fully function... I can't even say it. As, as an adult Be careful person, with that fully functional word. <laughs> as, you're, as an a seemingly adult human charading around and parading around like you know things 
And uh, all of a sudden, we're suing airports because they're made a certain size to carry a certain amount of weight and hold a certain amount of fuel and hold a certain amount of luggage. And all of a sudden, it's their fault because you had to pay extra to buy an extra seat because you're huge. I, I have to disagree. I have to disagree. And you have to understand that they're made to a certain specification. And if you don't fit within those specifications, then you're outside of what's considered the normal paradigm. That doesn't mean you're abnormal. That just means that there's an issue and you should expect that. Did you not expect that when you decided to buy a plane ticket? I expect them to accommodate all of my needs. Then why don't they give me a million dollars as soon as I hop on the plane? Is that really a need, though? Everybody needs money. Who's going to say that they don't need a million dollars? Really? That's true. Okay. See? Unless it's the person that's giving you the million dollars. Well, then I should sue the airline for not giving me a million dollars as soon as I step on the plane for gracing them with my presence, right? Right. Exactly. But, nice. you know, to, to further the point of the airline thing, you know, it hasn't just been about... It hasn't just been about accommodating people's individual needs as much as we've seen lately in the last few years of accommodating different animals people are bringing on the plane. So you might need to have your emotional support animal sitting right in front of me, and I might be sitting behind you allergic to this emerginal, um, emerginal, de emerginal support animals. <laughs> the emotional de support animals? animals. Yeah, those things are causing me to have an allergic reaction on the plane. And do I get moved? Does this happen? Does that happen? We had to uh, actually jump. We had to move our seats on a flight. And it was very difficult to do. Uh, the <laughs> We were taking a really short flight. It was a connecting flight. I want to say it was like an hour and a half. It wasn't very long. Like as soon as we got up, we were up for about a half hour and started landing again. It wasn't long at all. And for some reason, the way they had us set up, like they split my family of four up and, you know, we're trying to tell, we're trying to tell them like, look, we have two little boys. We can't let them be alone. That's not okay. Right. Well, too and, bad, sir, because your allergies discriminate against my need and ability to have a service animal on the plane. So it was. It didn't go that far. So this is what ended up happening. Dingus kind of saved this situation and made it work. So, um, the youngest one wanted to sit next to me, and there was only like three seats. So I was like, okay, I'll sit with the boys. And they wanted to put my wife like four seats up. All right, and I'm like, okay, why can't you just put her right here next to the boys on the other side? Things will be fine. So they proceed to move um, my wife up the plane. Dingus sees his mom walking up out of sight and thinks she's not getting on the flight and we're leaving her behind. He throws a shit fit, like in a good shit fit, like screaming bloody murder. Mommy, no, don't leave. <laughs> <laughs> and at that point, the flight attendant was like, oh, shit, will anybody move? And then when, when the people saw this, they were like, oh, yeah, we can't separate a boy from his mother. But it, it took that like you need to know what human emotion is to be a little bit nice to get your ass out of your seat and let this mom sit next to her children. Right. But Screw that's not human emotion. We're all uh, robots. Uh, we're getting there. <laughs> <laughs> it's coming sooner than we think. Oh, and speaking of that guys, uh, for every, for everybody out there that's listening, guys, if you're into the, the AI stuff and you want to know more about this, Okay, this is kind of a big deal. Um, Tom Ross is coming back on the show. Uh, Tom Ross is very, very big in the AI transhumanist movement, and he's coming back on the show. So if you guys have any questions for him, I need you to email them to it's doomsday podcast at gmail.com. Send me those questions in the subject line, put questions for Tom. And I will make sure to get those questions and ask him those questions. He seems really excited about coming back on, so I'm pretty stoked to have him. Uh, let's see. Uh, Kylie, welcome in. Jay, welcome in. Welcome in, everybody that's popping in that I, I may not have seen. Uh, so, Jake, back to this sense of entitlement in this this offended thing, because I'm still 
kind of dig in this topic because we got to get to the root of some of these things because if if human beings keep going down this road of everything offends me where is it ever going to end it doesn't end that's the point what it doesn't it doesn't end it keeps going there it just keeps going there's not going to be a finish line no this is dude no 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 we are on the uphill swing of categorizing each other into micro categories by our own choosing. Does that make sense? No, tell me more. Okay. This is, <laughs> I will try to make it as short as I can for time's sake. Um, for those of us who understand our history, um, not like the history of the United States, but our history of humankind. When does the fall of any great civilization begin to kick in? I have so many like thoughts bouncing around in my brain because I've heard one guy talk about the clouds are aligning. I've heard another one talk about whenever money doesn't matter anymore. I've heard another one say when we're all ready to kill each other. I really don't have my own answer. What's your answer? No, 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 no. I mean, those are all factors for sure. But one of the main things that starts, that kickstarts the decline of any popular civilization is the uh, idea of a collective oneness of people. Um, what I mean by that is... You go through these, you go through these tough times as a civilization, right? Let's say you're just starting out. Um, you have, you know, you have to have build shelter. You know, you need water supply. You know, you need food and all the essentials, correct? And if you don't have those things, it becomes a very um, ardent task to take on. You know, it's very difficult. You have to supply enough food to feed enough people for three meals a day or whatever you do. Um, so, so nothing, nothing else above that is the objective. The objective is to survive, correct? Yes, I would say survival would be my ultimate objective. Yes, and if that is your ultimate objective, then everything that would be above that doesn't matter in that sense, which is okay. But after this, let's say you've stocked up water, You've got a running water supply. You've built an aquifer system. You've got a food supply running. You've got uh, you've got a, a large beef supply. You've got cows grazing in the field. Um, you've started planting. You've got farms. You've got fields, and you've got plenty of shelter. So, what comes next? Security. Security is is involved in that, and once once you get through all of these necessary steps. You go through to step two, and step two would be, well, now that we have an abundance of food, an abundance of water, we are secure, our people are seemingly happy, everybody is working and productive, what do we do now to keep it all moving? So you add in things like uh, policies and taxes and, and, and governments, and instead of security, you transcend that to a police force of some sort. Um, and you add in all of these things and you, you start to make rules because now that you've survived, you have to organize the survival. So in order to do that, you have to have rules that everyone is electing to say, yeah, we can agree to that. Let's govern ourselves based on these rules. So you do all of these things. You set up, you set up that foundation and you have some religion thrown in there. You have, you have some things starting to kind of stray off of this because now you don't have to worry about just surviving. You now have to worry about what happens after you've survived and what happens after you die and all of this. So you, you work toward these things. So you've got a whole tax code to, to organize. You've got a whole religion to organize. You've got all of these things that society needs to be um, cooperative. You so know... Really just what? I wanted to comment something real quick in this. So, you know, in recent years, I would say, you know, uh, post 9-11, we've seen everything about religion become offensive to somebody. Right. Mm -hmm. And and specifically, you know, 
Americans going after people of different face faiths, things like that, right? Mm-hmm. But I just had I just had to throw this out there because you, you know you at some point religion is a controlling factor for society, right? It it absolutely is. Um, and and back in the day we pushed this really big. So like you're talking about the coming up of societies. I you know even where I live now, if they don't see you in church on Sunday, oh. You don't talk to that one because even the bad boys around here, they go to church on Sundays. Like, so it's a big one, you know. Hmm. I, I would, uh, I'd have a conversation with those people and they probably wouldn't enjoy it, but whatever. Um, but to like summarize this, you, you basically, you add on, um, to where you have this balance. You have this humble balance of there has to be, there has to be something to work for, Correct in order for people to have that willpower to continue to go, right? You know, as, as a father, we, we see it through that our kids turn into well-adjusted human beings and, and go out into the world and, and do good things and succeed and prosper, correct? Right, exactly. So this is the same with societies. We do all these things, we set up all these things, and we get to a point where we've worked so hard, we've built so many structures, we're starting to build skyscrapers, we, you know, people are, are abundant in wealth, we have... Um, you know, a, a little, little debt to pay back, but it's enough to keep people motivated to continue to go to work, yada, 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 yada. You have all this stuff set up. What happens when you surpass all that? What point do you get to? You get to a point of convenience, correct? Yes. Because if you have everything that you need, you personally think of all of the things that you would need. And if all of those needs are met, then what do you do after that? I mean, if, if all my needs were met, I would just spend my time having fun. Correct. And, and probably offending the shit out of a lot of people. Sure. Sure. <laughs> you would do you would do whatever you wanted within your your level of convenience because you don't have to do anything else. And for the most part, I, I would imagine the vast majority of people would not be would not have a motivation to continue to be productive members of society. Rather it would backfire and they would be unproductive members of society, correct? Right. And well, we're seeing that today. We're seeing that today because yes. we have an overabundance of convenience and security and wealth and all of these other things. And it, life, life is very, very easy for people these days, correct? Compared to, let's compare it to 100 years ago. Is life vastly better now than it was 100 years ago? Well, yeah. And I mean, given location too, absolutely. Yeah. And I mean, we can, you can nuance it. You know, I know that there are people be like, well, this and that doing and this factor and blah, 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 blah. Overall, life is better now than it was a hundred years ago. I'm 35, a hundred years ago. I would be like, well, um, I'm 35. I'm probably going to make it till I'm 40. Life's been good to me, darling. And, uh, you know, I die of some devastating disease or something like that. I don't know. Um, living till you're 40 now is just shrugged off. Um, compared to a hundred years ago when I'd be considered way over the hill. That'd be like being 80. Um, so life is vastly better and life is vastly easier. And because of that, what's the motivation to strive to essentially be a good, normal, cooperative, agreeable person if you don't have to? Uh, well, I guess potentially fear of the afterlife. Okay. That could be right, a motivating that's... factor for some, but not all. Well, and then also, I think for some people, it's the idea of like, you know, don't end up in prison. That could be a motivating factor for most, but also not all, because you and I both know that some people do not give a shit. And I think, you know, some, and, and I've, I've stated this before, and I know people are going to disagree with me on this, but, you know, envy is a big motivational factor. Envy gets things done. So people put a lot of time and effort into things based on they want something they can't have, whether it's a bigger, faster boat or a nicer house or a faster sports car or, you know, more money in the bank or, you know, maybe they want to afford fancier dinners, things like this. So they put effort into bettering themselves to go after these wants and needs. I would, I would say in, in that case, Envy and ego go hand in hand because I think those are two very motivating factors for people now. Oh now yeah, have, absolutely. We no longer have a motivation to just survive. We now have a motivation to thrive. 
And because we have all of our basic needs met and we can pretty much shrug those off day to day, now many people are, are just uh, focusing on uh, what's my follower count? What can I do today to make people watch my stuff? What can I do to make people listen to me? And you have some good with that and you have some bad things with that. And one of the bad things is that we have an overabundance of convenience in the sense that we are, are so thriving now that we're living in such comfort that we can sit back and relax and nitpick all of the things that we don't agree with out loud because we don't have other important things to focus on. So before you continue, I want to welcome some people in. Welcome, Rudolph. Welcome, Seth. Welcome, Ba. Ba Ramu. If you guys don't know Ba, I do a show with him once a month. And he also does a show you guys should check out as well. And uh, Miss Melody, welcome in. Jake, before you continue into this, I do have something to tell everybody. <laughs> since, since you brought up follower count and things like that. So guys, uh, It's Doomsday Podcast has officially hit enough monthly downloads to qualify for network status. So at some point here, I'm going to start submitting the show to, to a network. It's, it's going to happen. We've hit the monthly required downloads. So hopefully we'll get there. Um, Cause it would be really nice to get, you know, like a decent network support. I don't know who we're going to submit to yet, but we're going to, we're going to try to do something. So, you know, that's my envious ego thing right at the moment, Jake, since you brought it up. <laughs> I don't, I don't see that, that being an envious or ego thing. I see that being a motivating factor for doing what you do. It is. It's extremely motivating, dude. When I logged on today and I saw those downloads, I was like, oh, we did it. I got all excited. I sent Jake a picture right away. <laughs> <laughs> so if you guys don't know, it's, uh, you know, Al and Jake and myself, the effort goes into this, guys. It's cool to get. It's cool to see the downloads. It's cool to know that there could be a reward coming at some point. Like, that's all cool. But right now, just keep keep plugging away. I'm just going to keep plugging away, keep on trucking. It's very exciting. Oh, yeah. Ba helped too. Thanks, Ba, by the way. <laughs> yeah, Ba was there. Ba was there. <laughs> <laughs> but we couldn't do it without viewers like you. That's right. He says, ha-ha, you're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> that's great uh yeah so if you guys are if if you're out there and you're on spotify or you're on apple or you're on, on any of these places guys leave us a review share this out you know help help us keep growing we're on a great path for growth right now um let's see if we can keep you know plugging along at that that'd be great so you know one of the things i mentioned about this with the envy thing and the ego thing something i was telling people that disagreed with me i'm like listen you guys gotta kind of understand that uh Coke dealers basically built the Miami skyline. And if those guys weren't motivated by greed and evil in envy, I don't know what, what they were motivated by because they were cocaine dealers. Money. I mean, come on. Money. Money and power. That's That seems to be the two motivating factors these days, does it not? Hey, preppers, do you want 10% off survival food? Go to www.readywise.com and use code DOOM10 at checkout for 10% off all your survival food needs. Again, that's code DOOM10 at checkout at readywise.com, D-O-O-M-10 for 10% off at readywise.com. Yeah, it does. And I mean, you know, I get it. I understand, like, okay, right now we're stuck in this tiny house. I want to get out of here so freaking bad it's unreal, right? We're getting quotes to build this thing, and it's like that is not in our in our realm of what we can afford to spend. And could we go get a loan? Yes. Do I want to be house poor and stuck under a mortgage? Absolutely not. Like I know we could get a mortgage, and I know we could afford to pay something every month, but I don't want to be house poor. I don't want to be looking at a, a twenty five hundred dollar, three thousand dollar a month mortgage. I don't want that. Like I, I don't want blame you. I want the freedom to know that I just have property tax or I just have an electric bill. Or if we do have a mortgage, it's a very small one that can be managed, you know, with, with one person's income. Listen, I'm going to tell you guys something out there. Um, I used to have this real good friend. She's an older woman and she gave me a really piece of advice her parents gave her. And she said, Jester, just take this with you to the grave, man. And I was like, okay, what? She goes, 
always have a mortgage you could support on a one income household. Like, don't ever you and your wife together say together, this is what we can afford. She said, nope, make sure you could afford it on one person's income because you never know if you're going to get sick and get knocked out of work or if she's going to get sick or if one of you is going to die. And then you're going to lose everything because you said we could do this together and now we're apart. I have kind of taken that advice with me and ran with it. And I know what I'm, what my means are and you know, what my wife's means are. And you know, right now housing market is nuts, but I just think that's a good piece of advice. Everybody should stick by. Welcome in dude, Sean. How are you today? Um, and with every increase of legal restrictions, what's the point of being a homeowner? Illegal restrictions. I'm kind of confused by that. Uh, Anyway, but to move into that, I thought that was a great piece of advice. And I mean, right now, and I see this happening with a lot of Americans, we're all being taught to live outside our means, right? Um, If you can't afford it now, Jake, Jake, I can give you a loan. No. You want a loan, Jake? Nope. You want, Jake, you want a credit card? No. Hey, let me, let me get your email and your address so I could send you offers every week. No. For a credit card and and a loan. Jake, have you thought about refinancing your house? No. Have you thought about, hey, Jake, I got this platinum card. You want that? No. Hey, Jake, I'm trying to reach you about your car's extended warranty. No. <laughs> so, but that's what I'm saying. They <laughs> they they dangle these things in front of us. Like, hey, you could be doing more. If you want that PlayStation 5, just go put it on a credit card. No big deal. Nope. If you want a new car, guess what? We're offering a discount this month and a better interest rate. I know you just bought this car three years ago, but it's time to trade in. Nope. Yeah. That's <laughs> that's Robert. Welcome in, Mrs. Dials. Jake, have you Hello, met Mrs. Lady. Dials? She does a show over here without. It's pretty cool. Yeah, she goes by Dirt Lady, I guess. Really? Oh, weird. that's right. I, <laughs> is that like a shower thing? Or I I have no idea. I don't know, dude. I, I don't even care anymore. People can do do whatever you want to do. Who cares? <laughs> but no, I mean, so. You know, again, with with the greed and, and the motivation and the envy and everything, definitely them putting, um, you know, the banks and governments and everything, putting loans out there and making things readily available for people to get themselves further in debt, to be able to get these things and buy these things. It's kind of like, well, you're just kind of perpetuating that right now. Right. Is it, though? Because we don't have to agree to it. The problem is the lack of education, I think. I would I would rather argue it that way and say, um, you know, they at least in a legal context, which is where this is always going to fall. But ignorance is not an excuse, correct? Right. No, it's not. I want to answer Ralph's question real quick. So, Ralph, the motivation for getting out of the tiny house is there's five of us living in this house. And we're out of room. Uh, we we thought this was going to be a great idea. Like, oh, we'll put up this tiny house. We could pay cash. We'll be done. And, and that's it. And it's five people inside of 560 square feet. Um, it sucks. I, I thought this was going to be so much more doable than what it was. It's just, it's, it's bad. <laughs> it's so bad, man. Uh, like I'm literally hiding in the bedroom right now, podcasting, build another tiny house. Yeah. Well, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I I mean, I'd, I'd feel happier At, when you're in a tiny house, dude, every little thing makes a big difference, right? Storage is key. And it's, it's to the point now where it's, it's my wife, it's myself and my three boys and they don't even have space for their stuff. Right. Yeah. We, we had, and I know this is good, but some of you are going to think this is like crazy. When I say this, we had to put locks on closet doors to store things away. So the kids couldn't rip it out because they get so bored that it's, Oh, let's play hide and go seek in the closet and tear everything out of there. Right. <laughs> so we've had to put like locks on top of the doors, like that they can't reach. So they can't like, pull out you know clothes that they're not supposed to wear yet or decorations or whatever because we're just running out of room to put things this is a horrible experience welcome in crucible man i just saw you in here yeah about 100 square foot per person wv pappy sucks <laughs> boys can make a house for themselves that's right up dingus's alley he's outside building shutters and stuff uh anyway jake i'm sorry i, I interrupted you i totally lost track of where we were uh we were talking about financial stuff and uh convenience factors right Yes. So 
how you said, well, you don't have to agree to these terms and conditions. You don't have to do this. The, the envy thing I think is kind of what pushes us over the edge with this stuff. So a good example is I could like think of is say that you got a guy you work with and he has the same car you do or something similar. Like maybe you guys are both import guys. Maybe you're both lifted truck guys, et cetera, et cetera. And he comes in with a brand new set of rims or a brand new turbo kit or something badass, right? Mm-hmm. And you're like, oh, man, I want one of those so bad. Now, this guy, he doesn't have a wife and kids. He still lives at home with his parents, so he doesn't really have any bills. So he could save up a few paychecks and make these expensive purchases. He's not really obligated anything, right? Sure. But But then there's yourself. I've got kids, I've got rent, I can't afford this, this is out of my means, but oh wait, I've got this platinum card. Mm. So you see you see Roger show up with these sh- nice shiny new wheels, and you're like, oh, I could get those new wheels too, because I've got this platinum card. Not thinking about the idea that you know, you're going to be financing these wheels, you're going to be indebted to these freaking wheels on your vehicle. You get what I'm saying? But it it makes it come easier for people. And it's a lot easier to swipe a card with invisible numbers, you know, than to actually sit down and think these purchases through. Yeah. Convenience factor. <sighs> then so we get the buyer's the, remorse. <laughs> so so do you think the, the motivating force behind that specific case is envy? Hmm. Or do you think it's ego? I think it's got to be a combination of both. So my question is, if you see it and you're like, man, I really want those. What's the motivating factor for it? What's the reason behind the purchase? I guess some envy. Like I see what he has. I want, I want the same thing or better. For what reason? Because it just looks good. He's got it and I don't. Let me have it. It looks good for who? For him, for Roger. (laughs) So it's an ego thing. Well, it's, yeah, I guess envy and ego. Well, are you angry that he's got him and you don't? I'm envious that he's got him and I don't. Yeah, that that would be envy. But if you did it because you buy them because like people will think you're cool, then that's an ego thing. See, I think if I was doing something better than what he did, that would be considered an ego thing right like if i wanted to make if i wanted to be better than him i think that would fall into the ego side right yeah i mean if you're if you're gonna get emotional over if you're gonna get emotionally angry because i think you said roger or whatever has has rims and you want to one up him um that the one upping process is definitely an ego thing. But if you don't have something as nice as the next person and you're angry about it, that's envy. You you're envying. If you're envying somebody because they have something that's seemingly nicer than what you have, that's envy. Um, but if you, if you do it in a, in a way to uh, prop up your social status, so to say, then that's an ego thing. is an emergency action message. At approximately 1 a.m. Eastern Daylight Time, Nora is tracking 15 ICBM nuclear missiles inbound to the following cities. Orlando, Miami, Pittsburgh, Dover, Newark, Richland, Philadelphia, New York City, Baltimore, Los Angeles, Las Vegas, Boston, Seattle, Detroit. This is an extremely deadly situation. Stay tuned, the next emergency message will be a presidential address.